Hey there everybody, welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. In the last episode we finished off Agriba, defeated Jafar, or Genie Jafar even, but unfortunately we could not save Princess Jasmine. However, Genie, good Genie, is now on our side and we have a new Trinity ability, Green Trinity, and a new keychain, but there's people around here. I did not know that. I, I guess this is the only time in the game when people actually appear. Anyway, this episode we are not going to move on to many new places as we are going to be doing a revisit to previous places, getting some level ups, some new abilities, and most importantly, we are checking out a new feature in Traverse Town, which you need to check. Like seriously, you really want to check it. And we are also going to do the Olympus Colosseum tournament that we left behind. But as you can see, none of the Heartless are spawning around here. And that guy looks like Waka. Or, yeah, it's Waka. Anyway, so there's not much to do in Agrabah at the moment. But there is one thing, if we head over to that storeroom here, or whatever it's called, you may remember there was a green and... I missed a treasure chest before, hopefully it wasn't too good. Mega potion, yeah, good thing I'm glad I didn't miss anything important. But there is a green trinity mark, this is of course trinity ladder, which basically just lets you reach higher up places, and this gets us an AP up. Awesome, I'll use that right away, and I finally used that defense up from the last episode. Thank goodness I saw that this time, but with that I think it's time for us to head to the gummy ship and head off, and I believe that, oh wait, we can revisit some places and unseal more trinities. Wasn't there a trinity mark in the accessory shop? Could this torn page be from Merlin's book? Let's return to town and give it to him. So, we do have a lot to do. The game even wants us to revisit. Now, we could go to one of these two worlds. The top one is harder than the bottom one. But we're not going to do that quite yet. So, I think, first off, we head to the Olympus Colosseum. But I want to actually fly the gummy ship this time. As we haven't actually been across the roof. As for the other places, we'll make a quick stop off in Wonderland and Deep Jungle, not too much to do there. So, let's get going, and with the gummy ship, I'm actually really thinking of doing all the missions, because as you might see later on in this episode, I do get a few of them without even trying, so I might do it off screen. But here's the portal, and I'll speed up the footage as we go onwards. No, 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 left, 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 ah, I meant to go left there. So we've made it to Deep Jungle, this wasn't the place I intended on going there first, but as you can see I've completing missions without realising which is great. So while we're here we may as well drop in, there's only one thing to check out. So I think I will land in the tunnel, I think it is. It's not, n nothing near the camp I don't think. Hopefully I got this one right. When it loads, come on. Takes forever. Here we go. It's a, oh, so jumping. So that's about the mini game that that you do with Tarzan. So that mini game actually has a purpose now. You can win some items on it. I'll save it till later because we have a lot to get through in this episode. So I'll save that for a later one. But if you remember this Trinity mark that you could not see, I swear. Here we go. 
And what do we get for that? A whole lot of health and a mithril shard. Not too bad, we'll be using that later this episode. Bring it over to Olympus Colosseum now, just cut that footage out because it's a long episode and like need to keep things going. So, over here we do have a green trinity mark again. So let's get this one and we just pull something out of the wall this time. I believe this one's mithril? Yes, got it right. And something else we can do now that we have an upgraded spell, Blizzard in particular, now that we have Blizzara, we can put out these torches. Torches? I think that's the right word, but as you can see, it burned out. And just putting all of these torches out will give you something, of course. So I'm just going to speed it up here because it takes a while. And you only need one blizzard effect to actually do it. However, like, look at this. I hit, I swear I hit both of them, but I guess not. And I swear I hit that one too. It's because it, it makes the same look as if you hit it as when it just runs out of room, like range. Anyway, hitting all of them, a chest will appear somewhere around here. Uh, all the way over there, oh, of course it is. So let's go over and get that. And w I did not even see what that was. I think that was just a gummy, I'm not seeing anything here. So, yeah, must have just been a gummy. Nothing too important, but it's worth getting anyway. So, we have a new tournament available to us, or it's been available for a while now. But, as you can see in here, first of all, there's a chest that will not open. So much for the Keyblade unlocking anything. And if we talk to Phil, we can now go into the Phil Cup. Enter together, because we don't have any other options. And this is... Probably the first proper Colosseum tournament. The preliminaries didn't really count. Here we go. So it's just 10, 10 matches? 9 or 10. I think it's 10 matches against some enemies we've already seen. Power Wilds, and they are actually incredibly weak. I guess, like, the leveling up I did around Agrabah really helped. Like, as you can see, like, these really are scaled to to be when you unlocked them, so like, if you go a bit ahead, they are quite a bit easier. Anyway though, uh, again, just making a note of this, I'm not going to go over any new enemies or different stats, because stats do- Whoa, that was awesome! <laughs> that blizzard was great. But I'm not going to go over any of the stat changes, because it happens to almost all the enemies here. You go, Goofy, woo! And as you can see, you might already get the thing with this tournament in particular. Now in each tournament you will have like a special boss or something at the end. And this one, you can probably guess what it is already. It seems to be parts of the guard armor. These are the hammer legs. I'm not going to be showing stats for these, even though these only technically appear here. I'm not including it as a proper boss. And the hammer legs, they just act like the legs usually did with... Like when they separated from guard armor. And you can be sure, you'll see a bit more of them. It's interesting how the pink color palette here matches closer to the original PS2 release. But, can I get a sweet blizzard? Not bad. Oh, and a level up! Got Defense up there, which is great, and Leaf Bracer. I believe that lets me... Like, when I cast Cure, I, it'll keep going even after I get hit. So, like, if I get hit, like, just after I hit, like, Cure, it wastes my magic and the spell doesn't go off, and it's really annoying. But that's very helpful, even though it might not se seem like it. I think it's also very, like, it costs a lot of AP. Here we go, large body! Woo! I'm thinking I might just spam magic on it. And was it sleeping before, like, we got close to it? Anyway, there shouldn't be a problem. All these enemies are quite weak. If they stop dodging. And the camera was stuck inside a large body for a moment there. And just spam magic. It'll make it- oh, no, guard. That was a terrible guard. 
And got it properly this time. Now, only two tech points? That's nothing. I'm used to seeing like the eight tech points whenever we deflected the fat bandits now. Or whatever it was, pot spider, some pot scorpion, I mean. Sorry. But here we go, and of course, here's the next part of the. the. armor, I suppose. I don't know what to really call it, but these are the, gaunt the gauntlets. Again, they just act like the gauntlets did from guard armor, except separate. So I'm, I really don't know what to call this. like enemy as a whole, I guess. I just call it um, armored parts. I don't know. It's pro it probably appears in the journal though, and if I actually remember to check that out. But casting lightning doesn't work on green wreck- oh! Donald got a level up! Max items! That is okay, I guess. I mean, I don't really put items on those two anyway. But I guess it can be useful for like any particularly tough fights where I might put items on them. And these large bodies are so annoying. Just die. We've come a long way since first fighting them though, which is good at the very least. I really want to know what determines the ending pits there. But we're almost there, just two more fights, this time gauntlets and hammer legs. As well as some monkeys. And it always seems good to open off the fight with some blizzard or thunder. I say on like one of the few rounds where I don't, but as long as I keep curing, I, I, I think I've got a lot better with staying on top of my health this time. I've, I've learned from my mistakes. Anyway, that's the gauntlet down, and one more le leg. I wonder if you get more points for defeating both, or just if it's like one each. Oh yeah! So like, I got 4 points defeating one foot, and then 10 for defeating the other. That's interesting. Anyway, here we go, the last round of the fill cup. And we have to fight, you probably guessed that, the armoured torso. It's not the whole thing, but it's the part we haven't seen yet. Anyway, the armoured torso is actually a bit more annoying than the others. It will, like, constantly spin around. It's easy to deflect the spins usually. If you're not in the middle of attacking something else, or in the middle of attacking it. But once it has those effects of that weird, like, wind effect around it, that's when it can hurt you from spinning, that's when you can deflect it. But that's it. That was the fill cup. Fill cups... Um, <laughs> I somehow missed that enemy, but... The fill cup was pretty easy, like, as you could tell. But there's a couple of other things to make note of, but first off, we have won our victory. We're the champs! We are the champs, and for winning that, we get a new magic spell. This is the last one that we have not seen. This is gravity. I never thought you'd do it. Not bad. Phil, you're just as stubborn as ever. Don't pretend you're not happy for them. Ahem. <clears throat> now, kid, you've still got a long way to go. The next round starts soon. Next time, it'll be the real thing. So, with that, we still can't open that chest, but we do have a nice little trophy for the Phil Cup. And if we speak to Phil yet again, and go into the Phil Cup, you can notice we can enter alone as just Sora. Now you do get different, a different reward for completing that. And then once you complete that, you unlock the ability to enter as a time trial. And you do get Donald and Goofy back for that. And basically completing under a certain time in that will unlock things. Back here in Traverse Town. And we're in the accessory shop and this appeared. Oh, hi, Jiminy. What in the world are you doing down here? Hmm. Playing hide and seek. Oh, I just don't believe it. And here I was, up all night, just worried sick about you. Why, of all the Pinocchio?
Well, sorry for disappearing like that and not reading out that text. I won't lie, as Jimmy is around, but more importantly than Pinocchio, just a random cutscene. This is the only time you see that cutscene, by the way. But more importantly than him, we have a green Trinity mark, so let's jump up, pull down this ladder, which I swear went straight through us. And before I go up, you really want to light this fireplace. Just trust me on that one. Not with Blizzard, though. That won't be very effective. Anyway, so let's climb up this ladder and see what's up here. Here we are, and we have a couple of chests we should get first. A Mithril Shard and a... Oh, Dalmatians. Did not expect that. And I think if we look around here, we get a... Yes, we do. Get a postcard. Sweet. Now, these creatures are called Moogles. First, you have to listen to his explanations. Of course, it's the last one I'll talk to. But we can use your items to make new things. And so basically, all those items you've collected, which seem to have no use, is all for this. This is the item synthesis. Welcome, Koopa. Here, you can make a variety of different things, items, equipment, other things, but more importantly, there's really good award, like, things you can make at the very end that I'm going to try and do, like, so, I'm going to try and make at least one of everything. You can see all the different materials on the right, what you have, what you don't have, and the things that are more bold are what you can make. So I'm just going to go through. My advice is you want to try and make at least one of everything. So even though I can make, say, another Mega Potion, I'm not going to. Anyway, so that's all we can make for now. However, if I talk to him again, after making a few things, you can see we now have the option to make out of 12 things. So the more things you make with them, the more things they all have on offer for you to make. Now, I don't think I can make anything else. But there is another important thing I do want to say. Oh, I'm so close to that. Just a couple of bright shards. I get those from green rec requiems, I think. But there is one more thing I do want to make a note of in the item synthesis. But I'll do that in a little bit. As there is something else in Traverse Town I want to take care of. But first, our new item, the Golem Chain. A lot of strength there, definitely putting that on Sora. It's very hard to like pick what I want to get rid of. Like, if something's got AP, then I really don't want to get rid of it, especially because it probably means I have to equip some abilities. But I think it's you always tend to find something that's similar to it. So like, if I look at like one of them, like. This one will up HP and defense. And usually there'll always be like some form of change. So there's always like HP and defense, like magic and AP or strength and HP. There's always something that you can replace it with usually that's better. So getting some good items and good equipment and nothing too new. We still have that torn page we need to return. And so that's what all these purple items are for, uh, as well as a few other things. Like, sorry, as, um, except, like, not all, all of them, just most of them. Anyway, I think that's all we can do here for now. So, there's one thing that I've shown off in a couple of worlds, or maybe only just two worlds, actually, in Deep Jungle and Anthrobar, I showed off something that I always like to call the Unique Heartless. We've been around Traverse Town a lot, but we haven't seen it yet. Well, at this point in the game, I'm not actually sure when it first happens. I think in Traverse Town it's once you see all the keyhole. But at this point of the game, we can finally encounter the Unique Heartless in Traverse Town. If I can actually get it to spawn. Now, the interesting about getting it to spawn that I am going to mention, you do need to come in through the se through the first district into the second district. When it spawns, the yellow operas won't spawn right in front of you, and you'll see him dancing around down there. However, in saying that, you do need to go at least two rooms away 
for it to actually spawn because if I just go into this room and then back in the second district it keeps the enemies that were there before so like I killed off the yellow operas and and then when I went back in they weren't there that's because it keeps the enemy data and if I went further into the room more enemies would spawn but I think I get this this one's fairly common I said that about a few things but yeah there it is it's down there already and this enemy, I'm just going to pop up the bio here, this is the Sniper Wild. I'm just going to say this straight off, you do not want it to see you. Now, this enemy drops the Power Stone, I believe it is. That is the unique item. And this enemy is actually pretty weak, usually one combo will defeat it. However, if you do start attacking her, then then like, like let's say you shot fire at it from afar, it will notice you, and that's the last thing you want them to, like that is the last thing you want to happen. And basically, when you kill them, the tech points will count from one up to a certain number. I'm not sure. Eventually, they do stop spawning, but it spawns like one will spawn. And then two will spawn, and then three, then four, and then maybe five, I'm not sure, or maybe it's one, two, three, and then it goes back to one. Anyway though, and the more you defeat, the more chance of course it drops the item. I think it won't spawn, like the item won't drop until the fifth one defeated, or the sixth one. But I'm just gonna cut here, because this takes me forever. Finally got the power stone, I've been at this for like an hour straight maybe not quite that long but half an hour straight like it's ridiculous how hard this one is back in the first district and let's deliver that postcard we got we get AP up nice one only one left unfortunately that one won't be obtainable for a little bit longer and and we won't be getting it for a lot longer but let's head into the third district and I do want to show off one cutscene in particular. If we head into the no longer vacant house, we can talk to Leon, so he's just talking about the keyholes. But if we talk to Aerith, do you remember seeing a man with spiky hair at the Colosseum? Now, I actually forgot this was here. I was doing this like while fighting Sniper Wilds, I just came over here to do something, I don't know what, but I ran into this. Yep. I wonder if he's still searching for his friend. Sora, if you see him, please tell him to be careful. He's not that friendly, but we all care about him dearly. She is, of course, talking about... And she just says the same thing. She is, of course, talking about Cloud. And we do know Cloud. We fought him. So, if we see him again, we will tell him that they care for him. Anyway, just gonna cut over to Merlin. Here we go. So over in Merlin's place, we have a few things to go over. Uh, first of all though, Torn Page. Sorry, no. First of all, we can go back down to the cavern. But first of all, second of all I should say, I'm bad with counting apparently. We got a Torn Page, so let's actually get into probably another bigger segment of this episode. This is the 100 acre wood. Every time we do a revisit I'll be sure to come back here. There's usually two or three or one, two or three, let's say one or two torn pages or and segments that I'll be working through. Now this one was unlocked beforehand. Forgive me for just running around here, but we do have a new character. This is our he is basically just a tutorial for 100 Acre Wood, as it is primarily minigames. But, forgive me for running around, I thought there were treasure chests. So if we head into Pooh's house, or Mr. Sanders as it says, Renig also. It didn't do anything. Anyway, let's head inside. Oh, bother. There's no more honey left. If only the honey tree would visit. Oh. Then I could eat my fill.
and that's basically all we can do here. Just that cutscene? That was available beforehand, but Al will tell us. Let me guess, you'd like to know what happens next. Unfortunately, some of the pages are missing, so I can't tell you yet. The pages are scattered over many worlds. Would you find them for us? I don't know what voice to give Al, actually. Although all my voices probably sound similar. But now we can actually use that torn page and head to the tall curious tree buzzing with bees. This is, as you can guess, the honey tree. And usually every time we recover a torn page, there'll be at least one new character, a new place, and hopefully some treasure we can find. Hello? Is anyone there? What am I to do? I'm all alone. Pooh? Pooh? Where are you? It's me, Piglet. So it seems Piglet's scared of us, as always. Piglet's always scared of something. Could have sworn there was a chest around here. Uh, well, well, maybe around here? But you want to sneak up on Piglet going around here, and walk slowly going up, because you don't want to touch him, just talk. Which is a bit hard, considering how small he is. Oh, oh dear. I was just, just... Never mind. I'm sorry. Don't be scared. You're looking for Pooh, right? You know Pooh. Ah. Oh, you see, I, I have something for him. I, I have to take it to Pooh right away. <laughs> oh, Pooh! Oh, I believe I smell a delicious something. A something like honey. Poo! Hello, Piglet. How have you been? Oh, I'm so glad to see you. I thought you'd gone away. I brought what you asked for. <laughs> Thank you, Piglet. Now I can finally have some honey. Really? But, 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 but how? I shall hold on to the balloon and fly like a bee up the honey tree, see? But if you take their honey, won't the bees be angry? Hmm. Oh. So, if we just head round here and talk to Pook, we can help him get his honey. And yeah, there's not a chest in there, it just doesn't just magically appear. But if you could chase away those bees, maybe he could get some honey. Sure, we'll help him out. So the 100 Acre Wood is, of course, based on minigames, and Al will tell us how to play all of them. Good day, Pooh, how are you doing? Using a balloon? Let me give a few pointers. And I can't skip this. So I'm just gonna, like, mash the text away, and basically describe how to do it. So basically, Pooh will be floating to the top of the tree with his balloon and he'll stop by each of those three holes to get some honey. Now, as Pooh is climbing up the tree, of course, some bees will start coming from the beehives. Now, when they do start coming, if they get to Pooh and pop the balloon, he falls down to the bottom, bottom and starts all over again. Now, I don't believe you can actually lose this one. You might actually be able to, but... As long as Pooh gets to the second hole, you're usually fine. Now the good thing is, if I don't fall immediately, if you hit the bees, oh no, come on, come on. So if you hit the bees, Sora will usually jump immediately to the nearest branch, which is very helpful. 
and this mini game goes for ages so I think I'm just gonna speed up the whole process because it takes like forever there's no it doesn't end until you the timer runs out and I don't know if there's a certain amount of honey you should get but as you can see it's pretty simple at this point I can like just stand here and then hit the bees whenever they come nearby Okay, that's it. Maximum amount of honey there. I don't think I've ever done that. That's where Pooh's always got popped. It is rather funny what I will do for honey. <laughs> the interesting thing about this cutscene in particular, I'm pretty sure that cutscene will change depending on how well you do in that minigame. But with that, the torn page turns into a new item, we get Nature Spark. And you might be wondering what that item is for. Well, I believe that item is another summon stone, as I'm gonna call them, for the Fairy Godmother. So let's head over to her and have a chat with her. Come on, game. I mean, it's a pretty big game. I can see why it takes a while to load, but... It says PS3, not PS4, and that could be why. But if we talk to the fairy godmother, she might be able to help us out. Talk again. Oh, another summon gem? Let's help this little one. Here we go. Bippity boppity boo! You learn summon spell Bambi. Of course, if we find more, we shall bring it to her. I really need to show off these summons, but heading into the journal, we have quite a few new things. First off, the Ansem's Report. Now there are 13 of these in total, I'm not going to go into them till we have them all though. We did get the new minigame. But let's head into characters and check out Bambi. So, Bambi will prance around and give you items. The more foes you defeat, the better the items become. And the items also depend on what world you are in. Which is important to note. Another thing that I'm going to take a quick look at, just seeing how we're going with the Heartless. Got quite a few, like quite a lot of empty spaces, and I did, I don't, s Red Armor, there it is. So Red Armor is the one from Olympus Colosseum, I remember to check it out for once. But we also got the green Trinity marks, they, they are in our channel as well, although I don't check that out. So with that, let's head on to the next place, Wonderland. I think. And make sure I warp there. Or take the normal drive. Yeah, there we go, and on mission complete. We get more gummies for that. And I want to land in the Queen's Castle. We have actually quite a few things to do here. Since we got Thunder, there was actually stuff for us to collect. We also have the Green Trinity marks. The unique heartless of this world, which we need to go over. And that might actually be it. But that is still quite a bit, so heading in here, I'll just quickly deal with all these heartless. Okay, and I'm back. And I'm in the bazaar room to start off. Checking out a few abilities. Putting Leaf Bracer on. And I actually missed something, I cut out something I didn't mean to do, I think, in that case. Oh, my bad. But... Thunder. Hitting these archers with thunder will, of course, make a chest appear. Back in the normal bazaar room. There was another room like that, I forgot, I somehow lost footage of. I might check it out again in the next, like, revisit, but basically it was the same sort of thing. There was a blue trinity mark, I think. Actually, no, it was just that lightning. We've been there before, actually. 
And it was just a chest from that lightning art thing. But anyway, back in the bazaar room, let's get back into what's actually going on on screen. Anyway, we are fighting a whole bunch of shadows because this is where the unique heartless spawns. You'll know it will spawn if sh only shadows appear. And a few waves of, sa of, of shadows will appear, like three waves of them around the whole table. And then in preparation for when it does appear, after this wave, a lot of gigantic shadows, actually called Gigas shadows, will appear. And a new ability, AP and evolution for Goofy. I'll have to check that out next time. But these are the Gigas shadows. These things are incredibly quick. If they even touch you, like if they land an attack on you, they'll just disappear. And they're really annoying. If they hit the hit Donald or Goofy, they'll still stay around, but if they land an attack on Sora, they'll just disappear. Defeating them, you get more and more tech points as always, and they will drop the Fury Stone when defeated. You need to... but I'll cut ahead to when I actually get it, actually, first of all. So, just meanwhile, there is a green Trinity mark here that is under the fireplace. And I got this while fighting all the Gigas Shadows, and it's, this gives me a Mithril Shard! Anyway, so apparently I'm forget, forgetting to show off the Gigas Shadows as well. Heading into the Rabbit Hole, I think it's called, the save point will disappear and a whole bunch of Heartless will spawn. This doesn't usually happen around the game. But if we fight off all these really easy Heartless, because this is like, I think these are the weakest Heartless in the game because, because Traverse Town got a bit of a buff after Deep Jungle. But defeating all of these, a treasure chest will appear and we can also knock out that green Trinity mark now. And we get a Mega Potion, so it wasn't too useful, but what about this? I think you can actually see this treasure chest if you look up enough. Oh, maybe not. Oh well, with this we get an elixir! Ooh, great item, of course. And maybe now I show off the Gigas shadows? I hope I do. Yes, yes, okay, cool. So back to the Gigas shadows. What I recommend is you get them all in the group and you have them running around. And... Donald and Goofy will attack them. You need to do the finishing blows though. To get Fury Stones from them, you need to kill at least three to actually get it. So I recommend you get them in a group, you run around in circles, and then you use lightning to fi to pick off the ones that Donald and Goofy have weakened. Anyway, heading back to the gummy ship, now that we have a few new items, including the Fury Stone, let's head back to the access to the synthesis shop in Traverse Town. Here we are, so we have one or two new things we can make, I believe. So we have the magic armlet, we don't know why we couldn't make that before actually, but I could have sworn we could make something with the fury and power stones. No? Oh, there, oh! You need Serenity Power and Dark Matter. Those are those are items we're not gonna like really collect for quite a while. They're high level items. But while we're here, it's worth noting the stones. All of the stone materials are only dropped by those unique heartless. Those unique heartless are only in final mix, not in the original. Anything that you can create that needed a power stone will usually be replaced by another item or just not exist. But with that, I believe that wraps up everything in this revisit around all the worlds. Although I did forget to show off that one thing in Wonderland, it wasn't anything too big, I think it was just like a cottage or something. But with that, I believe it's time for us to move on to a new world, so I'll do a quick warp to Agrabah in to get ready for that. And, hope you guys enjoyed this first revisit of probably three or four we'll have. Anyway, this has been Spiraling Helix. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.